Thanks for joining us today. I'm Luann Fulmer here with Adam, who is a certified financial planner. He's passionate about helping retirees like you have a remarkable retirement. Current financial partners, they have offices in Myrtle Beach, the Grand Strand, Charleston, the Lowcountry, also serving retirees in Savannah Hilton Head. We want to start off by giving you this phone number, 843-300-1182. That's how you can reach Adam and his awesome team with your specific questions, 843-300-1182. And get the Retire Y'all Planning Kit. It includes both books that Adam wrote. Retire Y'all, your guide to retiring in the state of South Carolina. And The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement, all complimentary, and the website, retireyall.com. Okay, we've gotten all that out of the way. Everything everybody needs to know except, Adam, how you doing? Welcome. Well, Luann, you know, Ethan's going to be upset because he likes to keep these shows evergreen, but there, uh -oh. there's some timely comments that I must make. It's Holy Week. Yes, it is. Right? It he is. has risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. So in celebration of Holy Week, um, Claire has scheduled me to get a vasectomy. <laughs> and uh, our puppy is getting spayed. Oh, wow. So we're going to be nursing ourselves uh, in our newfound sterilization. I hope I didn't just make you blush. Is that like mm. relevant radio content I should share with our <laughs> listeners? You can share it. We all know. We've uh, all been know, there. The funny thing is, I, I like some people in my office had to like pry it out of me because they were like, Adam, why are you taking so much time off of work? Oh, what? And I was like, well, okay, since you need to know about what I'm doing um, for the next two days, yeah. uh, I, 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 this is what's happening. A couple girls in my office were just like, good, it's about time. <laughs> like, whoa, can't celebrate this. <laughs> You've procreated so. four times. God you said, Claire. you know, populate the earth, yeah. and I have fulfilled my yes. civic duty. Very we nice. will have four kids, five Aww. and under, um, by July 4th. We're having a July 4th baby. Oh, wow. I think we're going to name her, like, America Freedom Curran. <laughs> um, Free I wouldn't do that, Freely. though, you know, because if, if, if her name was America Freedom, she would get banished from polite society because by the time she's yeah. uh, an adult, we'll probably go full-fledged socialism communism right. our flag will have a you know a sickle and a hammer in it no one will know what freedom is <laughs> that's right yeah they'll be what is this freedom thing you discuss is that when they read all of my emails and tap my phone so i don't say anything that's against the uh the regime's feelings all right anyways I just wanted to make you blush this morning, Luann, and, and let you know what's going on in my yes. life. So if you sense a little bitterness in my voice as I unpack some of the things we're going to talk about today, uh, it's because of what I'm up against this week. <laughs> okay. And think of, think of me and my poor puppy just yeah. sitting on the couch because we had a no couch rule with our dog. Oh, uh, which immediately was overturned within about two days. Oh, she's so damn um, she's, cute. She's a wonderful politician. Yeah, like immediately like, okay, we're not getting on the couch, June. This ain't happening. <laughs> okay, get up here. Get up, get here. up here. Sit next to me. <laughs> all right. Um, sorry to make everyone, uh, all the men listening to this right now, just kind of like squirmed They're a little cringing. bit like, oh, yeah. poor guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. I love shows like this because basically what we're going to do is unpack the most common phone calls that my office mm -hmm. is receiving right now. And if 10 people call my office asking the same darn question, you better believe there's thousands and thousands of individuals listening to our broadcast right now all across South Carolina uh, who are thinking about this and it's heavy on their hearts and minds. Um, of course, the whole regional banking crisis is starting to, like, fizzle out from the media's bright lights, but that hasn't gone away, right? I, I think um, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, and the FDIC uh, bailout that they enacted, where they're basically going to allow you to borrow money off of your mortgage loans and your treasuries— uh, at, at a at a zero percent interest rate, that's a one year program. I still think when you leverage your money up seven to one and you buy ten year bonds yielding one point eight percent, there is still a lot of regional local banks that are up against the ropes. They're just going to unwind and unpack in a more 
formal way, unlike Silicon Valley Bank, where like the FDIC literally needs to put uh, you know caution tape around the bank and act as tellers, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna basically be swallowed up by one of the big four banks. And of course, this is playing right into the big four banks, like right into their palm, because they're back to yielding 0.01% on deposits and all these regional banks who are scratching and clawing and fighting to, for deposits are trying to compete with the high yield money market the online banks which are yielding 3 to 4% and they're going crap we can't pay 3 to 4% because we add all this brick and mortar that we need to pay for and all these employee tellers. And, and oh, by the way, our risk manager decided to buy a bunch of 10-year bonds yielding 1.8% and the Federal Reserve raised interest rates 3%. So that storyline has not gone away. In fact, I think it's going to get worse. In fact, as a firm, we've created a money market model that I sleep well at night knowing we can – shift millions and millions of client dollars into it. And I know darn well that we have a really short-term ladder of rock-solid, secure investment instruments. I'm talking short-term government treasuries. I'm talking uh, rock-solid, triple-A, double-A, short-term corporate paper, under 30 days, under 60 days, commercial paper, uh, FDIC insured CDs. And this money market is diversified across multiple different financial instruments. So even your high yield money markets online, like if you looked at the rating of that bank you do business with online, right? We use insurance products here periodically if, if it fits the, the, the plan that we're designing. And naturally, anytime someone buys a fixed annuity or a fixed indexed annuity, uh, they want to know what's the insurance company's rating, right? <laughs> and naturally, we only want to do business with A-rated companies. So uh, it's a viable question to ask. But my question to you is this. What is the credit worthiness of your bank you're doing business with? Like, that will shock you. It might be a B- minus or a C-plus in some cases, but you don't give a rip because you have FDIC insurance. So do yourself a favor and check out the credit worthiness of your, your, your local banking relationship that you have. Anyways, I didn't want to do a whole show on the regional banking crisis, but I did want to say it ain't over. You should be looking for alternatives. Even if your deposits are under FDIC insured thresholds, like if you got $100,000 in the bank, why on earth would you want that money in a vulnerable position with an institution that might get eaten up by another bank or might have to be bailed out? Like, I'm not trying to fear monger here. I'm just calling a spade a spade. When your bank's risk manager took your money, leverages it up seven to one, so literally took $100,000, turned it into $700,000, and then turned around and bought 10-year treasuries yielding 1.8%. Bad things happen when interest rates go up. That's what you're witnessing. That's what all the bank risk managers did. I'm not throwing them under the bus because they all did it. They were all doing the same exact darn zany game. And now we are where we are. Okay. So if you're interested in hearing about our money market, which I am personally using with my own family's money because I want to make sure that my cash deposits are spread, not just in some bank's general coffers, but spread across a multitude of highly rated corporations in short-term notes, commercial paper. The federal government, which I know we all kind of gag in our mouth when we hear the word federal government, but they are still the gold standard of safety because they have a printing press, especially when your bonds are tremendously short in nature, three, six, nine months, and you ladder them. And then also FDIC insured banks, not just with one bank, though, spread the risk across hundreds, if not thousands, of different banks. Interested in hearing about that? Call our office up. Lean into us. Uh, I think Michael is actually doing a a little workshop, like a little dinner presentation um, 
because we sent an email out to all the individuals who've done some planning with us, and we said, hey, you guys got a lot of money in the banks. Any interest in coming to a little little presentation on what to do with cash assets in a banking crisis? Because some people, Luann, you don't get a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in the bank by accident. <laughs> no, that happens because you one, you probably have some, you know, you suffer from analysis paralysis. You're worried about making a longer term business decision, so the answer always goes back to cash, cash. You're kind of like a squirrel <laughs> stockpiling nuts, and you're worried about, you know, diversify. You probably hate the stock market. We know that, right? Because otherwise, you'd have dividend producing stocks or you know, a diversified portfolio of different equities. Um, you probably hate insurance companies, right? Wouldn't it dare buy an annuity. A, that's like the scarlet letter, right? right? What was the scarlet letter? Was the scarlet letter an A or was it an S? I think it was an S. It was not an A. <laughs> and what they do, they, what they, what they put that on? They put it on their like forehead. cheaters, right? Put it on, what? Yeah. <laughs> they put it on their forehead. Yeah, I think they know, but they put it on like, like, the female cheaters. Oh, cheaters. Yeah, they did. Is that what they did? It was ladies. Yeah, it was ladies who, yeah, probably like, you know, kind of prostitutes or something like that. Why weren't they throwing it on men's foreheads? Yeah, I know. The men were always I tell forgiven. you what, I have <laughs> a, um, I think there's a special place in H-E-L-L for <laughs> all adulterers. Uh, and I might have just turned a bunch of people off from the radio, um, <laughs> but I don't care. Um, like, I, I just think it's like you made vows. I've said this on the air, and some of you guys might be like, oh, he's just saying that. Like, no, no, it's real. Like, I mean it to my core. Mm -hmm. Like, my favorite holding period for an investment is forever. When I made vows to Claire, it was forever, yeah. right? So that's just the pact and i love that pact right yeah. what a wonderful sense of security that i know i have a partner who's going to be there for me forever mm -hmm. how did i get going on this luann well <laughs> scarlet, scarlet letters. letter yeah some people Was think the a, a word, word is a scarlet word. letter like yeah. annuity oh yeah. i hate it right <laughs> so what happens you hate the stock market you hate annuities you hate bonds you hate everything throw it all in cash and now that person's like well crap I hate the banks now, too. What do I do? Well, put it in a diversified money market fund. We can help you with that. Call our office up. We'll talk you through exactly how we designed this thing and why you should feel really good because you're probably going to earn a heck of a lot more interest in our money market fund than you are in the bank. And in my opinion, it's more secure because you're better diversified. And we're not doing business with companies that are leveraging money up like your local bank is and your regional bank is. Call our office right now, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. I wrote the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. It's called Retire Y'all, your guide to retiring in the state of South Carolina, and we give it away for free. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Free book. All you need to do is go to our website, retireyall.com, or call our office up. We'll get you this book in the mail. 843-300-1182. My friends in Georgia, in North Carolina, in Tennessee, throughout the whole nation, we wrote a book for you, too. It's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. We'll give you that book for free because you're like, I don't want the South Carolina book. I live in Illinois. Um, okay, we'll give you a book. I got a friend who wrote a book about escaping Illinois. <laughs> so we could send that book to you as well. I'm sure Scott would be happy to do that for you. Um, so uh, call our office up, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or check us out online, retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. All right, let's talk about the common questions I'm receiving in my office. So um, should I take a break? Yeah, I'm going to take a quick break. Okay. Um, because we're already at 15 minutes here. But on the other side of this break, a lot of people are asking, Adam, did you hear about Russia and China and India and South Africa? And they're no longer going to be conducting trade using the dollar. And the dollar is in risk of no longer being the world's reserve currency. 
And did you hear that petrodollars are no longer the thing that oil is going to get tr be traded through? Um, and these are very, very real concerns. Now, the problem is most of the people spouting this fear are waiting with bated breath to sell you gold mm. or put all your money in life insurance. And what I believe is there is a more sensible way to protect yourself from the dollar losing its status as the global reserve currency and the American world order coming to an end, which, by the way, is going to take a very long time. It probably won't even happen in my lifetime, but my kids or my children's children are going to blink going, crap, we're no longer the envy of the world anymore. Why are we like, uh, why are we converting our dollars to Chinese yuans before we contemplate making a big buying decision like the rest of the world has to do? Let me take a gulp of air. Come plan with my firm. If the things I'm talking about resonate with you, whether it be I think, um, you know, cheaters should all get scarlet letters on their head, uh, men and women, or you're worried about your deposits in the bank, you're hearing some of the same things that I just unpacked, the, the dollar losing its reserve currency status, and you're going, what do I do with my money? How do I retire in this environment? How, how, how am I to feel good about any investment decisions I make in a world where um, you know, we're literally arresting a former president for um, you know, a made-up charge where you know, a human being could defecate on the streets or throw something at a police officer and have zero repercussions. Literally, a guy shot a guy and was out of jail that afternoon in New York. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we better arrest Trump because do you, do you feel any safer now that Trump has been indicted? Like, do the streets of New York just feel a touch safer now that Trump is uh, on under the thumb of the D.A. of New York? So ridiculous. So, so it's so disappointing, Luann, is what it is. Yes. And it's disappointing because the people who are applauding the theatrics of this, because that's what it is, it's theatrics, are the more holier than thou. I'm compassionate, and I just think, like, you guys all want to ban books. And I think, you know, uh, transgender drag shows i think it's important to expose our children to that because we have big hearts and i want everyone to feel safe and um you know this this mentality of i have a bigger heart than you but <laughs> it doesn't matter what my brain has going through it like the 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 electronic connections in my brain are clearly malfunctioning but because i have a bigger heart and that's my truth you all need to acquiesce to the way I believe in the pretend world that that I'm living in. Look how easy it is for me just to get knocked off track and angry. <laughs> you know, isn't it just disappointing? Yes, it is. All right, I'm going to take a gulp of air. I think the person you get your advice from surrounding your life savings should see the world through the same lens as you. That's why I share my politics. That's why I go off on rants like this. And I, I think you should ask. I, I literally burned through... Three liberal accountants. Three of them. Can you imagine? Like a like a a tax preparer with an affinity for everyone should pay their fair share. And like I was caught off guard by it. Like, whoa, whoa. Like you help people avoid taxes out of the right side of your mouth, but you kind of think people should pay more in taxes out of the left side of your mouth? My God, Luann, we've talked about it before, but that's like a, you know, a cardiologist that smokes cigarettes or a personal trainer that's 50 pounds overweight. <laughs> yeah. I won't beat that dead horse, but uh, I think the people who give you advice surrounding your life savings should see the world through the same lens. They should have similar values and principles. They should be able to look at the, the zany world around them and, and call a spade a spade and say the quiet part out loud. Even though any time we post something online, you know, the vitriol, the hate, the bad reviews, heck, my own family is, 
you know, banished from certain circles in our community because of our beliefs. But you know what? If what you're saying is true, to heck with what other people think. Because most of those people know it's true, but they just want to look favorably in those little eco chambers of wokeness. They just want to uh, say the right words and all the platitudes because that's what they're supposed to do. Because that's what I learned when I got my liberal arts degree at Brown or whatever the heck you school you attended. I'm going to say what I believe is truthful. And I'm not going to disrespect the man who thinks he's a woman. You're allowed to go run around, host a parade. Just, you're not going in the locker room with my wife. And if you do, I'm going to say something that needs to be said out loud. You're mentally ill. And you're making other women around you feel uncomfortable. And if you're making people around you feel uncomfortable, that's not okay. Right? Because it's not okay for me to say this on a, on a camera or on a radio, right? Because I'm making you uncomfortable. You're making women feel uncomfortable in the most vulnerable area on the face of the earth. Okay. I got to take a gulp of air. And we're going to talk about the dollar being the reserve currency. Come plan with us. 843 300 843 300 1182. Check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. Get our book. I wrote two books. We give them away for free as part of our Retire Y'all planning kit. One is um, Retire Y'all, your guide to retiring in the great state of South Carolina. The other one's called The Power of a Plan, your politically incorrect guide to a worry-free retirement. Call the office up. Get the books. Come plan with us. Retire Y'all Radio and Adam Curran will be right back with more. Hi, we're so glad you joined us today. I'm Luann Fulmer here with Adam Curran of Curran Financial Partners. And Adam, I love what we're doing. You're telling us, you know, what what people are calling you about in the office. So this is kind of fun uh, getting to know the hearts of retirees. Anytime I get the flood of calls going, hey, Adam, what do you think of these income annuities? Or what do you think about this product with the big bonus? I go, oh, God. And I, I, I literally know the actors in my community, too. <laughs> like, oh, did you go to a seminar with this guy? <laughs> oh, did you go to this one with that guy? And it's like, yeah, how'd you know? Like, good on them. Like, they're good showmen. They put on a good pitch, and, you know, they, they obviously are leaving people uh, wanting more information. And, and thank God these people call me, right? Because if they just take the bait, hook, line, and sinker, you become one of the victims I speak to two years later, right? I talk to the little old lady who has – hey, I went to this presentation and the guy seemed like a really good family man and, you know, he's a Christian and, um, you know, he put my money in this account and he told me it would never lose and I got this big bonus, but, you know, it doesn't seem to be panning out like as as, as fruitful as, as I initially thought it was. And they're two years into an account and if they want to get out of it, the, the penalty to get out of it is like 9 or 10%. So they're almost handcuffed to this financial instrument that they can never get out of. So one piece of it, financial advice for you. Any good financial decision has an equally good exit strategy. Now, another important thing. If it sounds too good to be true, it is, right? These are just truths that your grandma would tell you about money. And... What we're telling our clients right now, because we are like completely immune to what happened with the regional banking crisis. Like we analyzed our portfolios, we analyzed our client accounts, and we're like, we got no exposure to any of the shrapnel coming from Signature Bank or Silicon Valley Bank. And that is because when you look at the economics or the financial engineering of a bank, I unpacked it on the first segment. You know, you're leveraging money up seven to one, and then the bank is putting money into mortgages and debt that's only yielding two or three percent, and now the risk free rate is five percent. Surrender penalties, locking your money up for short periods of time, actually represents a safety mechanism for you as the consumer. Now, I know some of you guys are like, oh, I hate surrender penalties, right? Okay, so the alternative to putting your money in the bank, if you want something that's 100% liquid over the last year, would have been like a short-term treasury bond fund, 
right? If you don't want to do business with an insurance company, you don't want to lock up your money for any amount of time where, you know, there's a set maturity on it. Take a look at what Vanguard's total bond market index fund did in, in 2022, right? Had a yield of 2%. Because interest rates went up, it lost about 13%. Even short-term treasuries have the same interest rate risk dynamic. So there are times when naturally as consumers, we want it all. I want safety. I want growth. I want liquidity. I want to stop arguing with my wife about where we're going to eat tonight. Uh, you mind giving me a little back rub before I go to bed? Like, you want it all, right? And unfortunately, with financial products, you generally can only get two of those three things, putting the back rub and the arguments aside, right? Safety, uh, growth, and liquidity, right? So if you put your money in a bank, you're supposed to get safety and liquidity. No one's feeling all that safe right now. But keep your deposits under FDIC insured thresholds, safety and liquidity. You put your money into an annuity, whether it be a fixed annuity, if it's a short-term fixed annuity, safety and liquidity again, but you make make a little more growth than what you would uh, inside of a bank. But if you put your money into like a linked annuity, something linked to the market, you get safety. You might make a little more growth, but you're going to give up some liquidity. If you put your money in the stock market, whether that be bond ETFs or mutual funds or growth stocks or cryptocurrency or private equity or real estate investment trusts, you get growth and you get liquidity because we all know we can click sell and have money in our bank account within two days if you have money in a brokerage account, but you give up safety. Something I always need to like shake real estate people. Like real estate people think hard money lending is safe. Right? Like, oh, yeah, it's safe. It's a safe thing to do. Okay. If it's so safe, why, like, why are no one lending the money to these, like, house flippers but you? It's always safe until the music stops <laughs> and then everyone needs to find a chair to sit in. Right? Like, and I've, I'm only 40 years old, Luann, right? Which, it's, I'm a spring chicken still. Yes, you are. I have bore witness to people literally go bankrupt because of irrational exuberance, zero understanding of risk-reward. They go bankrupt, they dust themselves off, and they go back to doing the same exact thing that they did before, like using leverage, taking exorbitant amounts of risk, and pretending that they're not. And these are the same people that are preaching anyone could get rich in America and this country. And and unfortunately, just like the executives at Silicon Valley Bank, like there's no repercussions to behaving this way. Like the guy selling gold on the radio. You pull all your money out of an IRA or you take a bunch of money out of the stock market, you put it in gold, gold drops 40%. They're marching out there selling gold the next day. Like... Zero skin in the game. When you're an ice cream man, you sell ice cream. You don't worry about, you know, people catching diabetes. I don't think you catch diabetes. I think you, like, slowly slip into diabetes. Exactly. You don't get bit by a diabetes bug. You don't catch it, yeah. All right, I guess I should get my number out periodically. Come plan with us. If what I'm saying resonates with you, like... If this sounds sensible, if this sounds logical, if you want to work with an independent fiduciary certified financial planner and you want to turn your back on the product pushers, the hucklebuckers, the gold salesmen, the people doing dinner presentations trying to sell annuities, the guy with the bull on his business card, the fear monger, come kick my company's tires. Come through our planning process. It's a mathematical experience that will have you looking at your money under a completely different light. I believe my job is not to scare you into making a business decision you'll regret. It's to educate you on every option you have at your disposal. Talk about the pros and the cons. 
ladder and layer a multitude of financial instruments, all while keeping our eye on the prize, which is monitored with your retirement plan, your living, breathing, written retirement plan, a measuring stick you can use for the rest of your life, recognizing that money is just a tool, right? For some of us, it becomes our identity. We put it on an altar. At the end of your days, you don't get to do a victory lap with your net worth statement around your neighborhood. Your dingbat neighbor, you know, who keeps mortgaging his house to buy a fancier car, is going to be by himself when he meets his maker just like you. Now, I'm not telling you to mortgage your house to buy a car, but I'm telling you to live a little bit. Don't be the wealthiest person in the cemetery. God wants you to live an abundant life. I know he wants you to leave money to your children's children, but leave them enough to do something. Leave them enough to leave a legacy, but don't leave them enough to do nothing at all. That's Warren Buffett advice right there. Come plan with my little firm. Come kick our tires. See if what we're doing here is a hair different. I know it is. I know it is. I know my competition. I know what we're doing here is better. My mother told me it's better. So that's why I know it. And my mother would never lie to me. She's a professional clown. Clowns <laughs> are known for uh, their honest, honesty. Honesty, yeah. Yeah, they're honest, very honest group of professionals, the clowning community. I got to get my number out, and then I got to do and tell you like how demented my childhood was. Uh, come playing with me. 843-300-1182. 843-300-1182. Or check us out online at retireyall.com. Retireyall.com. Get one of our books. I wrote two books. One is the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. It's called Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the State of South Carolina. We give it away for free. Free book, extra, extra. Just go to retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. Or if you're not in the state of South Carolina, you're in Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Tennessee. God help you if you're in the Northeast. No, actually, no. If you're in the Northeast, you don't want to come to South Carolina. It's a dump down here. <laughs> Stay up there. Stay in Connecticut. It's lovely up there. I mean, I mean, did you see? If you're in New York, why on earth would you want to come to this unenlightened state full of idiots Stay in New York, you know? I mean, look at look at New York. Like, they got Trump off the streets. <laughs> you should feel a lot safer now that a billionaire, uh, you know, real estate owner is in handcuffs where he belongs. And, you know, all those homeless people crapping on the streets, like, maybe we, just, we need to find, like, drug zones. We need to put them in little tent encampment cities and... Give them more drugs so they could do drugs safer. You know, because all those people are worthless anyways. They're not sons or daughters or aunts or uncles. They're just drug addicts. So we'll put them in little tent encampments. We'll give them drugs for free. And I mean, New York is on the up and up, guys. So don't come to South Carolina um, because we're just a bunch of unenlightened rednecks down here. I'm kidding. (laughs) The craziest thing, Luann, is Someone will write me an email. I heard your segment about you calling South Carolinians unenlightened rednecks. It's like, (sighs) and then like for a while there, I used to reply to these people like, oh, I'm sorry, Sue. You must have just caught a short blurb. I didn't say that. I was just like, and and then I'm like (laughs) mid email. I'm like, why am I even engaging with this dingbat? I know. You are an unenlightened idiot. Like, (laughs) but. You know, I do it because I'm a man of the people. Yes. Come plan with us. 843-300-1182. 843-300-1182. Let me squeeze this in real fast. So, you know, I tell people that my mom was a clown growing up. Yeah. And they go like, did she wear, like, makeup? Like, uh, yeah. That's what clowns do. Like, <laughs> did she go to clown college? Like, she taught it. <laughs> or, like, so, like, she would have parties, and the party would be, like, attended by mainly other clowns. <laughs> Were they dressed up? Don't laugh, Luann. Come on, I'm like, trying to share. Like, I, I love I, your mom. Were they I'm dressed too, up? <laughs> I'm too proud. No, they don't dress up like okay. clowns. Okay, okay. 
I'm too proud to go to a, a, a psychiatrist, so I'm trying to <laughs> share my whole self with I'm you right sorry. now. sorry. And you're laughing at me. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Can take it, I take please, it back. Can, can you just say, like, how did that make okay. you feel? Okay. All right. All right. I will. So the, Okay. So back to the clown. So they would have clown parties. And all the clowns had come over. Yeah. And it was, like, just the most gregarious group of human beings. And little Adam thought that this is a normal group of people gathering in my house. <laughs> like, oh, these are just, you know, Todd and Mary. They're adults. And they're fun. And they're fun. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it was a wonderful way to grow up because my mother was a was a, a mother, a real mother. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't a latchkey kid. She was at soccer practice. Aww. She took me to the library. Um, I don't tell her that enough, you know, because now yeah. you know, all of our mothers annoy the heck out of us. Yeah. But there you go, Mom. I recorded it for you. Aww. So you can replay it. So when you're driving me nuts in my house, although we do love you. Because, you, you, you know, I see it now with my grandkids. Yes. Right? We are so blessed to have grandma and grandpa Aww. on both sides. Mm-hmm. Claire and us. Like, we remind ourselves of that too right. often. But anyways, let me take a break. Uh, 843-300-1182. 843-300-1182. Check us out online. RetireYall.com. Again, RetireYall.com. We'll be right back with more. This is Retire Y'all Radio. Hi, I'm Luann Fulmer here with Adam Curran. He is a certified financial planner here to guide you about retirement planning. And we've been talking about the phone calls you're getting, people calling in your office, asking their questions. Is there anything else you wanted to say about the um, <clears throat> the A word? The yeah, scarlet the A letter? word, the annuity. Yeah, so I, I'm going to try to cover the, the dollar losing, losing its um, status as the global reserve currency and annuities in a 12-minute segment. So... Let me take a big gulp of air, and I'm just going <laughs> to talk like a, an auctioneer for a minute. <clears throat> yeah, so here's the thing with annuities. They're not all bad, but typically if the annuity has a bonus, if it has a bell and whistle that uh, is being positioned to you like it's going to be you know, God's gift to investing, there's a tremendous amount of complexity. If we use annuities, we strip them of riders. We try to get them in the shortest, most forgiving chassis humanly possible. Um we don't want things with bonuses. That's never, never a good financial instrument. That complexity is not there to benefit the consumer. It's always there to reward the insurance company. Uh, when it when it relates to income annuities, <clears throat> here's my here's my problem there. So you're you're giving all of your money to an insurance company so they can pay you a monthly stipend, a monthly income, and <clears throat> excuse me. So the the problem is you're tying up your money into a a contract that you're basically never going to exit. Now, you have the ability to exit it, and if you meet your maker, there'll be like a refund of your your cash value. Um, But what we just witnessed in the last three, three, I was going to say three years, it's more like six months, Mm -hmm. interest rates literally going up 300% in the last six to nine months If you make a long-term business decision, you're making that business decision under current interest rates. And if I can put your money in something that is, um, you know, getting a guaranteed fixed rate of return of five, five and a half percent, and we structure your finances to distribute six or seven percent per year in monthly income, and then we we game that out over the course of your entire life, chances are if you live a normal life expectancy into your 90s, you're going to have a big old pile of money to leave your heirs. That's all that insurance company is doing, but when they do it, you're not getting the 5.5% ROI on your money. Like You're getting a substantially lower rate of return on your cash balance and then they're going, yeah, we'll give you 6 7% per year of, uh, via a payout. So I always call income annuities. It's like microwave financial planning, right? And Lord knows there are some people who eat dinner out of a microwave every night of the week. <laughs> but we all know food that comes from a microwave is not as nutritious, it's not as delicious, and it's no way to live your life, right? Food that comes out of a slow cooker on the other hand, is much more delicious. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we put vegetables in slow cookers, so that's a good thing for you as well. So before you make a buying decision like that, a lifelong buying decision that you cannot renege on, look at the world through a different lens, 
come kick our tires. Let us walk you through our planning process. Because in my opinion, when you buy an income annuity, and I know all the words they're going to use, it's guaranteed income for life. If you buy that, is it guaranteed income for life? And if you uh, can't do two of your six activities of daily living, it'll double for long-term care expenses. That's what's called a qualified health care rider. I know the whole shtick. Sometimes I want to do a show where I act like that guy and just <laughs> see if the phones ring. But then someone will be like, Adam, like, what happened to you? Just yeah. like, did your vasectomy go wrong? You flipped. Um, <laughs> you know, remind everyone of that. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, before making a buying decision like that, come through our planning process. Because what I believe is basic arithmetic, basic math will have you looking at that buying decision going, I don't want to do that when I could just put my money here and draw money out. Now, the one good thing about annuities is they kind of force your hand to start enjoying your money, which is my whole shtick, right? right. I believe talk radio listeners, God-fearing, flag-waving conservatives peck at their money like chickens because they're worried sick about outliving their assets. They're worried sick about inflation. They're worried sick about the dollar losing its reserve currency status. They're worried sick about a, you know, a man who's on... Alzheimer's doorstep running the free world. You know, they're 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 terrified that the, you know, the the police and the IRS and the district attorney is being weaponized for political reasons. Like all this stuff that's taking inventory up in your brain has you pecking at your money like a chicken. Has you working a few extra years. Has you going, "Oh, I couldn't take an extra 2000 for my portfolio. What if insert financial fear here?" So one good thing about annuities is they kind of like, all right, you're going to put your money in this thing, and we're going to pay you this every single month. But what I'm here to tell you is you can do that in a different way. You can do that in a way where you have more liquidity, you have more outs, you have better growth potential, you're more tax sensitive. And that just takes good planning. And the good news is this. You don't have to sit there and do it, right? We'll do it all for you, but you just got to bless the plan. You get to go, that looks good. That makes sense to me. And we'll educate you so you're not like, you know, we're using a bunch of $20 words to explain $3 concepts so we can charge you a $5 commission. We're going to, like, boil it down to decisions that anyone could wrap their head around. We'll have some of this money in secure places. We'll have some of this money in growth-oriented places. We'll have some of this money in dividend stocks. Does that make sense to you? Are you good with that? Are you good if we tie up some of the money in accounts that you can't get your hands on immediately because it's in IRAs, and naturally, we're not going to pull all the money out of our IRA overnight anyways. This is logical, sensible planning that we're doing here. Come plan with us. Get our books in the mail, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or you can check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. And um, again, when you go through our planning process, we don't make you cross three bridges. We don't make you fight beach traffic. All you need to do is call our office up or go to our website. We'll send you our books in the mail for free. Retire you all your guide to retiring in the state of South Carolina or the power of a plan, your politically incorrect guide to a worry-free retirement. These books are headed to your mailbox free of charge. Then someone from my office simply goes, hey, would you like to begin our little planning process? And to begin our planning process, it entails a 15-minute initial phone call, 15 minutes out of your very busy life, will start thinking and talking and being intentional about your life savings, about your retirement trajectory, if you can spend more money. Now, we're not going to reinvent your financial life on a 15-minute phone call. That would be naive. I would also run for the hills if someone says they can. But we'll start gathering the information that we need to piece together a living, breathing, written retirement plan. So when you come into our office, we're not going to sit around and talk about the weather and aimless drivel, small talk. We're actually going to talk about your financial life, and we're going to sculpt and mold a plan so it fits exactly what you're trying to accomplish. All right. I hate small talk, too, by the way, Luann. I'm not any good at it. You know? <laughs> you're not? And then I start looking around, like, okay, got to go. <laughs> um so dollar reserve currency status, okay? This has been a narrative that has been going on literally for the last, you know, gosh, since the Brenton Woods Agreement after World War II. Right? <laughs> really? Like literally the day after <laughs> Brenton Woods, when the dollar was announced to be the global reserve currency, someone was like, hey, 
what if we lose the dollar reserve currency? I better buy me some gold. Back in 1950, someone was already yeah. hawking Bitcoin. <laughs> um, you know? So uh, is it real fear-mongering? To a certain degree, yes, right? Watch Ray Dalio's uh, YouTube video on changing world orders. He unpacks how the Dutch had a world order that was um, taken over by the British. And, of course, the British world order was taken over by us. And now when you look at all strength indicators, China is overtaking America. And I hate to break it to you because I am a God-fearing, flag-waving nationalist, loud and proud. I'm not sure there's anything you or I can do to stop the momentum of world orders changing. Mm. I hate to admit that out loud, right? Our workforce is weak. They're lazy. They're uneducated. They're entitled. How do we fix them? They're clamoring for a universal basic income. The left side of the aisle has been hijacked by socialists. And like it or not, politics is a wrecking ball that moves left to right. So even if we get a, a strong leader nationalist who tries to right the ship, the ship ain't getting righted in four years. China has been plotting this for the last 50 years. They don't let their kids watch videos of Instagram models clapping their butt cheeks together. They're watching engineering videos. This has been a deliberate effort of educating their youth, stealing our technology, exporting more than they import. That's why China is going to be the next world order. That's why the dollar is losing its status as the global reserve currency. But what do you do in that environment? Do you put it all in gold? Heck no. One, this phenomenon is probably going to play out for another 100 years. Hmm. So what you ought to do is train your grandkids up on traditional American values. Spend your money and live an abundant life while the dollar continues to keep its global reserve currency status. The American economy is too valuable to the Chinese to fall off a cliff. That's not going to happen. This, this gut check moment where Americans are all living in cardboard boxes. Well, hey, by the way, that's already happening. Just go to San Francisco. They're letting people crap on the streets. What I believe is what you need to do is lead by example, educate through your own financial decision making, don't do anything irrational, put together a living, breathing, written retirement plan that gives you permission to enjoy your money. That's the only way we're getting out of this, by educating the next generation. Call our office, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or go online, retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com.